I think when people think salsa, they think, you know, the kind that we're used to when we go out for Mexican food or the kind you pick up in a jar at the grocery store with the tomatoes and the jalapeno pepper and the onions and sometimes there's fresh cilantro. And I love that kind of salsa, don't get me wrong, but um, salsa just means sauce. So in the summer, it's just so fun to experiment with different types of fruit. I do a watermelon salsa. I do a black bean and mango salsa. Uh, a strawberry kiwi salsa, which makes a great dessert on top of ice cream or with cinnamon sugar tortilla chips. But this one is really fun. It's a fresh cherry salsa that we're going to do with a little bit of garlic, a little bit of jalapeno pepper. And it's good with chips, but it's really great served with grilled chicken or my favorite way to serve it with uh, pork, either on the grill or we're roasting a, a pork tenderloin in the oven, which I'm going to peek on right now. And, ooh starting to smell and look delicious. Okay, so my friend Sarah Sawyer from Door County is here and she's gonna make later, we've got a big kettle of whitefish chowder on the stove. She's gonna show us how to make homemade whitefish chowder and we're also gonna make cherry margaritas. But she brought along her cherry pitter because um, if you're using fresh cherries and recipes, it can be kind of a pain. So this is genius and you can pick them up they have them all over the place. I know they sell them at Cook's Counter, or, uh, Cook's Corner in Ashwaubenon. Um, they also sell them at the different farm markets up in Door County. So you basically take the cherry and take the stem off of it and then turn it upside down or, you know, so that the stem part is down and then just makes life really easy. It contains all the pits are right there and it's genius. Great idea. Anne says, and I know a lot of people who, um, you know, uh, work a lot with fresh cherries, just used a hairpin growing up. And that also works well, too. So it's up to you, whatever you want to use. Um, but it's probably not a good idea to put it in your mouth and then spit out the, the, the pit for yeah. this recipe. Yeah, that wouldn't be a good idea. That is fun to do, but not for this recipe. So I'm just going to take the cherries and give them a little bit of a rough chop. And these are the ones that Anne was so kind and pre-pitted for me. And it is so much fun to go up there and take the family and pick your own. Ireland and I did that so last summer, a couple summers ago, and then we did the whole cherry pit spit thing where you try and spit it the farthest, and I was horrible at it. But anyway, I just want to check on this pork tenderloin and get it out of here and let it rest for a little bit. Oh, and it's perfect. So once it comes out, and this act actually happens to be a Door County marinated pork tenderloin, marinated in cherry juice, but any type of pork tenderloin is great, or pork chops with this salsa. I get questions all the time, um, people asking me, you know, um, pork, how do you keep it from drying out? How do you, you know, I love it, but it, seems to, it tends to be a little dry. Um, marinate it, that's key. Don't overcook it. Internal temperature you're looking for is 145 degrees. Use one of those, pick up one of those instant read meat thermometers and they'll be your best friend, especially when you're doing grilling um, in the summer or all year round. Um, and then the other thing is let it rest. If you take it out of the grill or out of the skillet or out of the oven, I tented it with foil and that is going to help keep it nice and juicy. And then I love to serve pork with some sort of a sauce. Pork tends to be a little bit drier naturally because it's very lean. Um, and so that's why, you know, the whole pork chops and applesauce thing, remember seeing that on the Brady Bunch? That's why basically, you know, pork um, and other dry meats are sometimes served with some, some sort of a fruit because back in, in the day, in the Middle Ages, it would help with digestion. So um, that's, you know, the, why the whole pork chops and applesauce thing came around. And it just really tastes great, too. So instead of apples, we're going to do the cherries here. So, all right. So I've chopped up some cherries. Now I'm going to do a little bit of fresh garlic. And this salsa is something you can throw together, you know, just before you know, while your tenderloin's cooking. It doesn't need to sit for too long. You could certainly throw it together the morning of, though. If you've got people coming over and you just want to get it out of the way, that's fine, too. A little bit of jalapeno pepper. Depends how spicy you want it. We're going to make this just not too spicy, so 
I'm not going to use the ribs of the pepper. I'm just going to use a little bit. Boy, these peppers keep getting bigger and bigger. So we don't need to use too much of this. This is just going to add a little bit of a crunch and a little bit of a kick. If you don't want the heat, you could just use regular green pepper. And that would work fine too. Now I've got a little bit of fresh basil. Really fresh. Really fresh. We just picked it from our little herb garden on the deck. And I'm just going to roll that up. Do some nice ribbons of basil. Just some sort of fresh herb would be great in here. Parsley would work fine too. A little bit of salt and pepper. Told you this was easy. A little bit of, we love our Dejora olive oil and vinegar. And we're using balsamic vinegar here. So this is going to kind of bind it all together. A little dab will do you. We don't need too much. So I'm just going to give that a nice gentle toss. Isn't it gorgeous? And our pork is nice and rested now. So I'm going to carve it up. And all of a sudden this, you know, ordinary pork tenderloin, which my family happens to love pork tenderloin, is going to turn into this gorgeous looking million dollar meal. So I'd love to kind of cut it on the angle a little bit. And you can see how, you can just see how juicy it is. And then we've got that cherry salsa to go along with it. How fantastic does that look, Anne? I know. See, there's an extra piece. Oh, yeah, Anne says she's got her eye on that extra piece. All right. But we didn't overcook it. We let it rest. We marinated it. We'll do a little bit of fresh basil here. And then we're going to do a little bit of this gorgeous Door County cherry salsa just kind of put that on the plate on either side so people can help themselves. It's going to go so lovely with the pork. And it looks gorgeous on a platter too, doesn't it? And easy. I mean, anybody can do this. I'm always trying to look like a rock star, but you know, I don't have a lot of time. So this is a, an easy way to do it is just whip up a quick cherry salsa like this, grill up a pork tenderloin and there you go, you've got a dinner that you pay big bucks for at a restaurant, save some dough and do it at home. Coming up, some more of fun things that we discovered in Door County. We're going to make homemade whitefish chowder and we're going to tour a gorgeous lodge. Uh, if you're looking to check in for a couple of days, this is the place. So stay with us. We'll be back.